Yes. My other trick is I haven't left this chair today. <laughs> I've been in this chair. Well, I've left it to go, you know, to the bathroom and stuff, but I have been, um, I haven't just went and been went in my own planner. <laughs> I've had a lot of people help, that I've been helping do whatever they needed done today. What do you need? What do we need? Oh my gosh. I've been answering questions. So I told Jenny, I said, I think it's fitting that I just stay right here. Why would I move now and pretend like I've been sitting at my desk all day? Cause I've been on this computer right here in this chair <laughs> all day long. So, okay. Plus our Wi-Fi is a lot stronger in here right now until we got to get some sort of new contraption for, for our office. Oh goodness. Hang on one second. I have people asking me just one second. I got to give my zoom number. Hey, Jetty, are you on there where you can do this for me? Yeah. Who is it? Okay. Uh, go on my breakthrough training page. The one that, um, It'll be a lot easier for you to do this. Maybe it won't be. Sorry, guys. I don't want anybody left out of this deal. I got some good announcements tonight. Yeah, it's going to be easy for me to do it, Jetty. I'm just kidding. Okay. Hang on a second. Hey, can you post that for me on the group, please? I would appreciate it very much. Okay. Okay, now we're really rocking and rolling. I'm for real this time. Okay. I have several things written down that we're going to get straight to. Um, first of all, we have uh, Block the Holiday Bulge 21-day challenge that starts tomorrow, December 1st. If you have people that are not in that group that you know that you have prospected because we've had this end of the month planner challenge and all that going on and you think, you know, you could probably go ahead and follow up tomorrow or whatever. Um, I really encourage you. This is going to be so important. What I'm about to say, you might as well get a highlighter out. This is going to be really important. If you don't have some sort of follow up notebook that just has names, I mean, the last over October and November, everything that we've done with the guessing games, the seven, uh, the seven day stuff, the online launch parties, the Facebook lives, the holiday block, the belly fat challenges, everything we've done. If it's not creating momentum, at least it's creating commotion. So you should be making an ongoing list and it doesn't need to be, see, I'm a really bad person about, post-it note type lists where I've got stuff stuck here and then this stuck inside this paper and I was sitting in the recliner that day so I stuck it inside a book and and I I need and we need I finally have one I've done this finally you need a solid notebook that's easy to find that is a substantial enough weight that it's not three or four sheets of paper that you at any given time know where it is that way when you are when you post a post that gets a lot of traffic, let me tell you an example of a post. Weirdest post that I made today while trying to secure my planner. I see other posts, other people posting this little jewel. It says in capital letters, in all seriousness, dot, dot, dot. Who on our Facebook has never, or who on my Facebook has never tried Plexus? Comment, and it has a little finger, you know, emoji pointing down. Comment. I'm curious. 18 people later, and several comments, like as I'm hashing it out with these people, people that I don't even know see my Facebook page are coming out and just flat telling me, you know, I've never tried it. Why they would come out and say that, I'm just going to be, be honest with you, is beyond me because they know that that's basically telling me, prospect, prospect me hard. Right? I mean, they don't know it's the end of the month on top of this, right? So, it's <laughs> people. Okay, so, you know, I have somebody say, I've never tried it. I said, you thinking about it? 
Oh, I'm too broke right now. Okay, so I skipped past that one. One says, I haven't, but I believe in it. What? I said, you got any health issues you want to tackle? She says, definitely. I start private messaging her, right? Of course. Okay, her name should be in my follow-up notebook, should it not? All right. Um, me, I'd like to, but I'm scared it would counteract with my high blood pressure pills. I said, it doesn't. At least not any of the stuff that I would recommend to you. Oh, then see someone else comes in there and says, I saw this and I had to jump on here. And Stephanie, I was on high blood pressure. Med and she basically comes in there and third party validates for me. And someone, and then Stephanie comes in there and says, oh, thanks. I'm a human guinea pig, blah, blah, blah. This girl should be on my follow-up list, right? That one's just happened in the last few minutes. She's not on my list yet. Uh, another girl, I have not tried it. This is a girl I met in Hot Springs three or four years ago. She was our waitress. Like, I, her, her last name has changed. That's how much I know about her. Like, I didn't know who she was. I had to go look at pictures of her. I'm like, who is this? I said, are you wanting to? She goes, this is the question of the year. Y'all ready for this? She says, what is it? I've been friends with her on Facebook for over three years. And she says, what is it? What? She saw that post today for some reason and decided to ask me a question. She doesn't know what it is. I thought, well, Lord of mercy, should she be on my, not only my follow-up list, but on my um, edifying list? I should go over and like some of her pictures so that perhaps the next time I talk to her, Facebook will force, will have forced some of my posts through her newsfeed. And next time that uh, next time Flexus comes up, she won't have to ask me what it is, right? Already I have been talking to her. Um, she's told me that her husband, I'm just telling all here tonight. She's like, I don't think my husband will let me order that. Oh, I got all kinds of things to say to that. All kinds of fun stuff I'm going to tell her about my husband and what a joy he used to be, right? <laughs> um, somebody's I'm always a joy. He's always been a joy. He's always been. He has always been a joy. Um, somebody said, I have the membership and still haven't tried it. Can you use the pink drink while best breastfeeding? Here we go. Okay. I don't know who she has a membership under. It's not under me, but uh, she should be on it. Started talking to her. And then my cousin, my cousin joined today. Uh, <laughs> right? She helped me win my planner. She doesn't even know that. Okay. Uh, anyway, I could go on and on and on. This is all these conversations. This is the reason I haven't left my recliner. This and many of you other fools had posted this post <laughs> and you're asking me questions and I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. I'm going to help you end the month. Well, okay. The reason I took all this time, like we're eight minutes into this call and I really want to emphasize to you that I would give just about anything to have had a follow-up notebook from when I started because when I started I was just like throwing mud against the wall praying some of it would stick I was answering when I would be out you know in a dressing room at Ross or somewhere I'd be like oh just answer this girl and never think about her again like literally then her name would never cross my mind again I had a guy today answer on that post this is worth telling I wasn't going to say anymore he says I haven't. That's his two, two words that he says to me. I haven't. I said, are you interested? He says, Lori Ward Harrison. Sure. I thought, oh, mercy. How do I know this dude? So I go back to my messages. August 15th of 2012. He said, I would like to try some if you have any left. This was a day that I gave out samples. Early in my plexus hood, I said, I think I'll have a couple left. I'll let you know after church. And then that was the August 15th at 6.30. And then later that night, I said, let me know if you still want one. I'm meeting a couple of people at 12.30 tomorrow at First National Bank. Told him where it was, and I told him my phone number. He said, can't make it, but please save me one, and I'll get with you some other time. Okay. Text me when you're free, and we'll try to make this happen. Four years later, he says on my wall, he still hasn't tried it. 
this is in this saturated town that I live in where everybody knows somebody who sells for everybody. If he was going to meet me in the First National Bank parking lot, he's local. And everybody that, that is living in this town thinks it's, you know, they're like, everybody knows somebody who does plexus. Four years, no one has prospected this man. And I'm like, tell me a little bit about your health tonight. I said, so I can help you figure out what products you would like, right? Okay. I'm telling you this because, well, this is a topic I can go on and on about. Because I was terrible at this in the beginning. I've gotten much better. You need to be good at this in the very beginning. You'll be glad. Okay. So we have the block the holiday thing starting tomorrow. It's not too late to add people to that. Last month, our, our results were so good that someone could have come in in the middle of it. And all that would have happened is they would have been mad at themselves that they didn't get it on the beginning. But it would have still been fine because they can do it 21 days from whatever day they start. Everybody understand what I'm saying about that? All right. Um... Start, uh, I don't know if you saw the post I made on the butterfly page just an hour or so ago. Starting tomorrow for seven days in a row, we're not going to skip the weekend. We're going to do seven days in a row, a cold messaging and follow-up challenge. I already have every single day written out. So like tomorrow morning, <laughs> the exact thing you're supposed to do during that tomorrow will be ready and waiting for you to read it and understand what you're supposed to do first thing in the morning. Um, there's a graphic to go with each day. Um, there's been a lot of thought put into this. I'm not going to say that I put all the thought into it. I was not the one who did, but it's a great, this, this seven day plan is super and I'm excited about it. So any of you that do want to participate, yes, Please remind me, someone re message me for those of you who are in my other two groups that I have. Okay. Um, let's see. So that's a cold messaging and follow-up challenge. During that time, you want your notebook handy. That, this handy dandy notebook. You've got to have that handy when you're messaging people. I encourage you that if you're out and about and you're all like, I can work this business from everywhere. I encourage you, if you can't carry that notebook in your purse, then don't care. Don't work your business from anywhere. Wait until you're, or, or, and, or at least make sure that every night when you get home, that you go back through your messages of the day, write down names, take notes for yourself. Um, the worst thing ever is for someone to slip through the cracks and then you see someone else introduce them on your team page. Welcome, my friend. And you're thinking, oh, crap. I should have followed up with them, okay? Um, now, all of this, um, I'm going to be, while we're doing the cold messaging thing, as you're stacking people, coming up with new prospects, there are so many great tips in this, this seven-day challenge. You're going to be overwhelmed with the new follow-up people that you're gathering. We're leading up to something. First of all, in uh, November... October and November, you should have been creating new lists and you should have been adding people to live events. Did you know that it takes, with your average network marketing company, it takes seven to 12 meaningful exposures to your company and what you do before a person is ready to make a decision. So if you have prospects and this is the first time you've reached out to them, it doesn't mean that it will have to take seven, but for most people, it takes seven to 12. So when you think, oh gosh, I already invited them to that last thing and nothing happened. Well, that means they just need more information or you have to assume that they need more information. Quite particularly, if you were a stubborn head yourself, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of karma that goes around with this business. If you were the most stubborn of the stubborn heads, when somebody reached out to you, you might say, Lord, forgive me for that. Gosh, what was wrong with me? Please don't let that keep chasing my butt, right? I don't want to like, I don't want that to keep chasing my tail around. So, you know, you want to be like, break that off of me, Lord, whatever I caused by being such a stubborn head myself. Um, <laughs> and you want to make sure that you don't have only stubborn heads following you around and asking you questions about this business. So, um, okay. Here's what you want to write down. Tuesday, December 13th. 
Let's see who all's on our call tonight. We got a lot of people. I really like myself from this angle. No, not really. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at myself going, gosh, I look tired. Tuesday, December 13th at 7 p.m., we will do another Facebook Live event. We will need people to donate prizes again if you want. Last time it was perfect. We had the perfect amount of prizes, the perfect kinds of prizes. The people that joined, uh, joined loved the prizes. Um, I will tell you that how I've spaced it out is I did some of the prizes the night of. The, the actual people who did their speaking did the speaking. Um, gave away their prizes that night, and a couple others gave away some prizes. Oh, hang on. And okay, that's that's fine. If it if it did you did you do you know what? Or message me about that later. <laughs> um, if if basically if uh, don't get worried about it. if we didn't use your prize yet. I think we've used them all now, but we may not have. We may have a couple that we haven't used yet. But basically, when Black Friday hit, I put something else on that page. Those pages are gold mines. They're full of people who have only had their seven or eight out of seven to 12 <laughs> meaningful exposures to Plexus. And so every time I'm putting something else out on that page, dripping on them, drip, 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 it's helping you. And so when I'm offering prizes while I drip, it's a heavier drip. Does everybody understand this? So the other day when they did the Black Friday promo, I did another one. And then when they did the Cyber Tuesday, I did gave away another prize. So I'm using the prizes and I'll try to tag you when I do tag you. I hope you see it when I use your prize so that we can know to get the stuff sent out to people. Okay. So Tuesday, December 13th, if you are unsure how to do, how to, how to move from this seven day thing that we're going to do, which will be follow up, follow up, creating, I mean, you're going to be creating a lot of commotion with your follow up and, and um, cold messaging people. If you're unsure what to do and how to follow through with those people to get them on our call, you need to go back to the file that's, um, that's called Momentum. That's about, starts with the whole gumball guessing game thing, okay? By the way, it doesn't have to be a gumball guessing game that gets you people names. The, this, this post today, the post that had the little finger in it, for whatever reason, was working for like every person that I... It was like I was looking around. I felt like I was in the twilight zone. I thought, who are these fools that are answering these people who are asking who's never tried Plexus? These, these people are stark raving fools. And they just were. They were answering. So um, make sure that you are um, between that, the momentum file, and between this cold calling thing that we're going to do, or cold messaging thing that we're going to do over the next seven days. We are building up steam for what's going to happen on December 13th, on Tuesday, December 13th at 7. I haven't made the group for that yet. Don't get all panicky on me. I got to make sure that I feel like the events, the way we've been doing it is the best way. I'm going to kind of think through that for a couple more days and make sure we're going to get the, you know, I love to take something and just ring it for all it's worth. So those old, old pages that your people are in, once I do make the new one, um, once I, <laughs> I just read your comment. Once I do make the new page, um, am I trying to say? I will send, you can go into an event. This is the coolest thing. You can go into an event and make it, make the, the old event, invite all the people that are in there to the new event. So all your old people, I'm not saying they'll accept the invite. You may need to uh, re, you do need to re-invite them, but at least the link and the ability to actually easily get on there will have already been sent to them so that when they click the link that you send them, they'll say, oh yeah, they've already been invited. And then all they have to do is respond. Everybody following me so far? I'm talking really fast and telling you a lot of stuff, but, um, see, okay. Another post that I've seen going around is a post asking if I could post on a friend's page. Somebody said they got almost 50 names from that. You never know what's going to work with your audience. I swear. I thought that the little comment one comment below one, there's no way that that's going to work on my page because five years, people five years. And then I have 
you know, a dude from four years ago message or say something. So, I mean, whatever. I'm going to just really quick going to go up through these comments. I want to congratulate anybody who got their planner. That's amazing. It's amazing that it's amazing that this fall and winter is much different than any fall and winter that I have taken part in so far because, uh, well, at least the ones that I'm interacting with regular on a regular basis, it seems that the October uh, incentive created a lot of momentum. And even those, the ones that didn't join in October, you had already given them meaningful exposure. And then November comes around and you're still kind of hitting it hard because of the planner or whatever your team might be doing. If your team has a particular incentive going on, whatever it is. And it's just building up to where December is going to be. It may be one of our biggest months yet. And December is not necessarily usually that way. So I'm excited about that for you guys. I want you to be thinking I'm all about attraction marketing and I'm all about attraction in general. I'm all about, did you know your heart is the biggest magnet in your, in the universe? So like, as you're like, what you ponder on on a daily basis and what really takes a seed and roots in your heart are the things that are going to manifest in your life. So if they're good things, you're going to manifest good things in your life. If they're bad things, you're probably going to see further tragedy in your life. And who wants that, right? So I want you to be very, take your thoughts captive. That's biblical. I want you to remember that the power of life and death is in your tongue. Also biblical. Um, I want you to really realize that this holiday season can be your best season yet even if you've been told that holidays are slow, because right now I'm not seeing any fruit of holidays being slow. I'm seeing fruit of holidays being big. Hang on. Uh, yeah. Somebody said that they've had trouble with people buying it on eBay. The eBay stuff is fixing to be shut down. That's what they put on all these fraud filters for. The reason that our computers uh, are, the reason that some of the, some of the orders are having trouble going through is because we have strict, we have strictified. That's not a word. We have made much more strict um, fraud filters. What happens when, because do you ever look at those things on eBay and you think to yourself, how do they sell it that cheap? Right? Okay. Because they bought it with a stolen credit card. Okay? It's just fraud. They've bought something with a stolen credit card. They're only going to be able to get away with it so long regardless. But now Plexus has put in stricter fraud filters. So when you have people whose orders are not going through the first try, that's because the fraud filters are kicking back when if the address doesn't match the address. The shipping and the billing don't match or if the shipping doesn't match your credit card address or whatever they're getting stricter on that kind of stuff. So the eBay stuff and the Amazon stuff is about to be gone. So, um, okay. I'm just catching up with the chat over here, making sure I'm not missing anything that I need to answer questions on. I want to refer back to my notes real quick. So I'm going to do a quick, first and foremost, the block the holiday bulge challenge. Second, these are the things that you need to have in the front of your mind. The seven day cold messaging and follow up challenge, which will start tomorrow. And the Facebook live call that we will do on December 13th. All of the things that have been happening in October and November should have been creating momentum for you should have been creating follow-up for you so that by the time we get to December 13th, you have a whole new little crop of seedlings of people that you can put in that group. You guys understand how this is all cyclical cycles where it's like, I used to look at it like you're always looking for three new customers and then you're always looking to take three old customers and flip them into ambassadors. It is sort of like that, but it's also sort of like you're always looking for three new prospects to add to your follow-up list. You're always taking your follow-up list and giving them meaningful exposures. So 
I have not been good in the past, admittedly, of being the sponsor or host of meaningful exposures for people. I in the past, I've not really done the launch parties. Not until like a, like about a year ago. Haven't done launch parties. Haven't done. I didn't do meetings in my hometown. I never did any of that stuff. I was all like, look, I'm going to take care of my stuff. Y'all take care of your stuff. I don't know what y'all are doing. I hope y'all are doing good. Do what you got to do. That's how I didn't know. I had no idea, no leadership skills whatsoever. I'm just being very honest with you. And I'm finally like, okay, get a grip on it, girl. And so now we've started doing things to where we can create real momentum where the cycles as they're turning over and as the waves are rolling in, you're having more stuff that sticks because you're giving people meaningful exposures. Even your brand new people, this is so important. You have someone who's brand new and the first thing that they ever did was guess how many gumballs. Okay, take this for example. Imagine this in your mind. Um, your imagination is so powerful, by the way. I want you to imagine this with me. Someone guesses how many gumballs are in the jar or how many whatever, candy canes. and from that, that was their very first exposure, the first time that they ever commented on something with you, okay? And from that point, you reach back out to them, you message them what we've got in the notes to message people, you start a conversation with them, and they land themselves in a online launch party or seven-day challenge or whatever the next thing is that's coming up with your team, and they're exposed to it in that group. But then we drip in that group, like all the, all the groups that I've had going since October, I drip and drip in those groups. And you can drip in there if you want to, to keep the conversation going, giving more meaningful um, exposures to these people. By the time that someone is ready, they may have been dripped on for a long time on your Facebook page, by the way. So that's why I don't really think the 7 to 12 meaningful exposures, the way someone like... Who's an old time Jim Rohn or some old time network marketer would have explained it to you. The seven to 12 meaningful exposures doesn't have to be like where you had to call them or you had to, you know, like do a, a meeting with them. It's totally different now because Facebook, they might get instead of seven to 12 meaningful exposures, they might get, you know, 30 posts. Those are like half meaningful exposures. <laughs> but they've seen your stuff over the, t over the last six months or whatever. So it's meaningful enough so that by the time you're ready to reach out, it doesn't feel like you're completely, you know, cold calling these people. So sometimes they're already ready. So I don't want you to get that seven to 12 stuck in your head and anything you get stuck in your head is the way it is. Did you know that? I could go on and on about that too. If you get something stuck in your head, like this person won't sign up until I've reached out seven to 12 times. You are right about that. Anything you get stuck in your head is going to be right. So when I give you something like that, it's not going to be Hey, 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 slow down. I can't hear you. Nobody can hear you. hear me now yep yep there you are it sounds like you're rubbing something on the it's quit moving work. your computer quit oh. moving it you quit moving you quit moving don't make me come in there <laughs> is it quiet enough now in here can y'all hear me yeah uh, yeah yeah go ahead is it better I'm looking at Misty Blankenship. Is it okay? A little bit better? <laughs> yeah, you're better. You're better. You're not as loud as you were a while ago, but you, we can hear you now. Is this better? Yes. Okay. We always got to see my eyeballs then. I'm going to hold it like this. Yeah, I think so too. Where is the mic on a, on a laptop like this? It's right there. Oh, right there? Yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs> I'm going to cover my mouth so they can't see me calling you names. Easy, easy. Down low? Yeah, right there. Right, yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill you. 
Uh, anyway, so when someone actually, this is y'all, y'all get on here for the entertainment, don't you? Okay, so when someone joins under a circumstance, I can't believe I remembered what I was talking about. When someone actually joins your team under a circumstance like that, they immediately think that that's just what we do. And it's actually really, I mean, talk about duplication at its finest because they immediately want to, they, you know, you can show them the file and that tells them how to create momentum. And at that point, they can just start doing the exact same thing. It's way better than just hoping that they finally start posting on Facebook. You understand what I mean? Like that's how I always did it in the beginning. I just always thought, well, they'll get their products. They'll finally like it and they'll finally talk about it. That's the only thing I knew is to cross my fingers and hope for the best. So, uh, <laughs> hey, well, Marianne, you need to tell me the, te or you need to tell whoever that is. Oh, S O. I don't know who that is, but you need to tell them that they need to tell me where the microphone is because I don't obviously know. I'm sure I'm really amusing someone like that. Um, they said my sound just got oh your significant other duh okay <laughs> anyway am I, is my sound still okay so fun to see all y'all do that at the same time that's my favorite okay okay <clears throat> so here we go I, I should probably ask does anybody have any questions about what we've talked about so far okay I'm the most excited I've ever been about a December <laughs> since I started this. Um, and you wouldn't think so with, with, you know, like the fraud protection that we have going on. Cause it's like, what? Um, sometimes you think, Oh my gosh, is this ever going to work? But I tell you what, I feel like now I'm gonna talk spiritual to you for just one second. I am a very, spiritual feely person and um you know like i feel things going on what feel like going on in the atmosphere and i've been feeling for a while that the end of this year was going to be amazing and the beginning of next year was really going to rock our world and i felt like even i'm not getting political here but i felt like even whatever were to come of the election was going to be very significant very very significant and here's my here's my hope and prayer in regards to this business in regards to the election okay just think of this now, i don't know i don't know enough about how politics works but what i feel in my spirit and what i feel like we should all be feeling in our spirit to intentionally feeling in our spirit any government regulatory organization that is Currently, um, I'm trying to think of the right word I'm looking for. Any government regulatory system that is bogus, maybe, or I'm trying to say, I'm trying to keep from saying, yes, corrupt. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm going to tell you the only thing that would come to my mind was full of S H I T. That's the only word like, okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, what am I really trying to say though? <clears throat> Cause that would have been one of my, what my dad would have said about the two government regulatory systems that regulate us, FDA, FTC, something like that. They're just full of corruption. That's a much better word. Thank you. <clears throat> My prayer is that, that there, um, the corruption will be exposed through this new, the new governing agencies. And I truly believe, I don't know, I don't know that it's going to happen overnight. I don't believe that at all. Um, but I do believe that that stuff will become, they will, it's like, I feel like what I see in my mind's eye is like, if you go like underwater and you get to the bottom, you ever run your toes across the bottom of a lake, like a disgusting lake, whatever's down there, like all of that stuff coming to the surface. That's what I see in my mind. Every time I think about 
government, governing, regulating agencies that are corrupt. I feel like all of that is going to be exposed. And when it is, businesses like ours will be in such a beautiful position to blossom even bigger than what we already are because we won't have corruption regulating us anymore, telling us that we can't do this and we can't do that. Just like I think it's ridiculous for the government to try to regulate homeschooling and those types of things. I think just keep your nose out of it. You know what I mean? And I think probably since I'm just really good praying this and I hope you guys will be praying this with me that those types of things will be exposed. Watch. I'm probably going to have, I probably have somebody who works for the FDA on the call tonight, but you know, anyway, you're full of corruption. <laughs> A direct message to you. <laughs> and uh, I'm praying and yes, linking arms is what Heather said. Let's link arms together on this because I have really big hopes and dreams for our company, for my team, just for people, uh, believers in general, believers in general for what's about to happen in this next season. And I'm real excited about it. So um, I think we should be very, very careful as believers what we allow to cross our lips. I think you should be very mindful every single day that you don't let um, negative talk come out of your mouth in regards to anything. I think it's so important when you're, um, I want I, I feel like I should tell you all this really quick. Um, this is deep stuff. But for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to go here. When I, when I had been involved with Plexus for a little while, I had stuff literally falling in my lap in regards to um, the way the products worked. And it's pretty common knowledge now about how our products work, but at the time it wasn't. The reason it's common knowledge is because after I figured it out, I would not shut my mouth. I mean, going on and on and on about this is how you get people well, this is how you make your immune system work, so on and so forth. Well, um, during that time when stuff was falling in my lap, um, and you guys know, I believe very much in, you know, gifts of the spirit, prophecy, that kind of thing. And I didn't know that what I think now, I think I was operating in like a, some sort of realm where it was like an open heaven, or I don't know exactly the words for it, but I feel like stuff was intentionally falling in my lap at that time because God knew where my heart was and knew also that, you know, I wouldn't keep my mouth shut because I believed I had a certain belief that I, and I still have this belief about why my brother is no longer with us. And I had a major incentive to not keep my mouth shut about stuff. So information was falling in my lap during that time while I was op or operating in that open realm situation. And at the same time that I got my stepdad to use the products and get well from a debilitating disease. Um, I was diagnosed with the same disease and I had never heard of it before my stepdad had it. Like it was a sort of rare debilitating disease. Now, most people don't know that I was diagnosed with it in the middle of my plexus journey. I was diagnosed with RA. Yeah. And I, I, I was mindful enough in my spiritual walk at that time when it happened to me to know that it was a bad idea to claim it over myself. Um, the person who told it to me that told me that I, they thought I had it is a person who actually cares about me, loves me as family member um, in the medical field. And I just remember coming home and telling Jetty, I do not have that. I feel like what now I can look back on it and I feel like I was operating in an open realm and studying it so much that I actually caused it on myself, caused the diagnosis. I was studying about it so much in what you would call like an open heaven situation. I'm going to sound, I sound real nuts to some of y'all right now, but I'm supposed to go there for whatever reason. And I thought, okay, well, this is one possibility because I, that's the possibility they gave me at the doctor's office. This is one possibility, and it's the one I don't choose to believe it. I choose to believe something else, and I don't have it. I definitely, I mean, it's a progressive disease. It gets worse, 
And um, immediately, once I started claiming life and speaking life over myself, the symptoms started going away. And um, I don't know why I'm supposed to share that with some of y'all tonight, but I truly believe in the power. And I feel like we're in a season like that again, where we're going to be in an open realm and you have to watch your mouth. You can't go around saying stuff like, oh, this is killing me. This is too hard for me. I will never overcome this. This, oh, this is, you know, oh, my marriage just keeps getting worse and worse. My kids are struggling. Um, I feel like it's so important that when you're operating in a realm like what I feel like we're about to be or are actually already are operating in, that you have to be, if this hasn't, has to do with your plexus business yes but this more than importantly has to do with your life and you have to make sure that if you're going to go around talking about yourself or other people don't be cursing it when when people talk about cussing or cursing and they get all twisted up about cussing or cursing i actually think that cursing is actually cursing like the word curse to curse someone you know, would be to go around saying, God, my sister, she's such an idiot. That's way worse than calling her a a cuss word. In my opinion, Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, my sister is, she's always going to be lazy and um, whatever, any kind of thing that you could put on their lives with the power of your tongue, I think is very important that you uh, rein that in. Oh man, the private messages are coming in now. I knew I turned the crazy faucet on. Give me a second, just a second. I want to tell you, I'm not going to say any names here, but I want to tell you what I just read. I'm not going to tell you what I read, but to the person that I just read what you said, um, do not let them label you. I, this may, you may be who the person I'm talking to tonight. Don't let them label you with what they're trying, anything you didn't say what they're trying to label you with, but I think it's so important to just plead the blood of Jesus over a situation and say, uh, God, I, I don't think that this is, this is from you. I don't believe this. I don't claim this over my life. I don't accept the label and I choose to walk away from the label. That's what I did when I was diagnosed with that. Um, I was scared when I did it too. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, rebuke it and just be like, Mm-mm, I do not, I don't walk in agreement. Um, I've been through phases in my life where I didn't know to do that too. I've been through all the seasons it feels like, but Um, you know, and I got my husband too. I I, I told him, I was like, look, I'm not going to accept this. I'm not going to go to a rheumatologist. I can't believe that I'd never heard of this disease before, uh, like a year ago. And then I studied my brains out about it to help get my stepdad well. And in the studying of it, I get diagnosed with it. The weirdest, like what? And I almost wanted to say, are you serious? Is that how clever you are to the devil? Because it's like, really? Yeah, that's how you're going to come at me. And, but the, the thing is, I look at it now and the angle he was taking was fear because I had built that disease up in my mind as something to be incredibly scared of because I had learned everything about it. When you go in, you read all the scary, everything about something. I, I wasn't as scared of the disease as I was the actual, um, as I was scared about the, um, meds that they put you on and what your meds do to your liver and so on and so forth. And I just decided, no, I'm not going to claim that over my life. So on and so forth. So I'm sorry. I've got a ton of private messages. I promise I will catch up with you guys, but I'm going to pray over you guys. I know it's the end of month, the month and I actually see faces on here that I know are trying to finish out the month strong. So I don't want to keep you on here all night, but I do want to pray over you. My mouth, my mouth is really dry right now. So somebody said, somebody said I'm a Baptocostal. That's funny. (laughs) They said, actually, they said they're turning Baptocostal, but I know that's funny. Okay. Jenny, is there anything I'm missing before I pray? Not that I can think of. Baby, are you sure? Are you saying something? (laughs) No. Are you putting me in a corner? No. 
I wanted to share with everybody what I posted on the Jewels page today after I won my planner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lori won her planner today. Oh, oh, no, that's not Congrats. what I mean. Congrats. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Yeah, and now I you can share. I want to share with everybody what I posted on the Jewels page. Yeah. Uh, so when I won before my planner. You, before you guys see this, this is, uh, I live with this daily. So. You what? I live with it daily. I live with you daily. <laughs> this. What you're fixing to show them. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. You guys know that I, that I don't, I don't have an upline. The person that sponsored me didn't really uh, sponsor me. I, I just signed up and it happened to be on their website. I didn't even know I was getting sponsored for something. So everybody on the jewels page all day long, they've been congratulating their downline for winning the planner and they've been putting these cute graphics. You've probably seen some of them floating around on Facebook. Well, I don't have anybody to do that for me, right? So I wrote this. One benefit to practically being your own sponsor is your graphics get to look exactly how you want them to. And so I put a picture of myself with, and I'll show you the graphic in a minute. And I said, this girl right here, me, without her, I have no idea where I would be. She's always hard at work, a heart of gold. And well, as you can see, basically, and I put a hashtag, eat your heart out, hashtag, you wish you sponsored yourself now. And this is what my graphic looked like. Let's see if I can show it to y'all. <laughs> it says, November incentive earner and basically, hottest jewel so it says it's got my picture november incentive earner and basically the hottest jewel and i post that on the jewels page well this was like late in the evening right as uh they were ending the promotion that was today that lasted until seven and so everybody was like oh my god everybody needed a little tension breaker so that's why i posted it <laughs> So as you can imagine, let's see, like tons of comments later, everybody just giving me a hard time about it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Je if Jetty had any sense about him, he would have posted that. I wasn't there quick enough. He wasn't there. <laughs> he actually didn't know that I won the planner. That's true. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to give him a break on that. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. The jewel, the jewels know me well, so they know that I'm just joking. Okay. So, all right. I like, I think we're going to pray now. I'm going to try real quick to turn my music on. This never works out for me. Like I think these days we'll see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, you guys just join me. God, tonight we're just so thankful. I'm thankful that 
All I can think is, at least I don't freak them out too bad. That's what's going through my mind. God, thank you that at least I don't freak them out too bad. Lord, I'm thankful for a team that feels like family. Or even more, actually, sometimes. Lord, I thank you that provision is there before we even think about it. Before we think about our needs, Lord, you have always provided for us in every circumstance. Lord, I'm thankful that I don't have to worry. I'm thankful that I can walk every single day out in gratitude and hope, peace. And that your love is what surrounds us, Lord. Lord, I just break down the walls or I feel like any kind of walls of confusion or um, distraction that try to come against us in this season, God, I just, I pray that you are much bigger than those things in our hearts and in our minds, that every day when we wake up and we encounter things, that we encounter if we encounter hardships or we encounter some sort of struggle, that we stop. This is a red flag. Stop. Okay, this is so weird because as I was thinking through this, I was thinking like the way our immune system works, you know how like we'll have a rash and you can take an immunosuppressant and you can make the rash go away, but it doesn't really make the core of the problem go away because you just turned off the alarm by getting rid of the rash with an immunosuppressant. Okay. Well, that's how your immune, you know, that's how your immune system works. I was thinking about that in regards to like, I feel like that's how kind of how we walk through life. Um, throwing down, you know, wet blankets on top, top of some sort of fire that's going on thinking that we're putting the fire out in a situation, in a relationship, in a, a troubled marriage or a work situation. And instead of going to the core of what's wrong, and I feel like those red flags, those little rashes, metaphorically, are the things that are telling us, stop what you're doing and pray. What are you doing right now? Stop what you're doing. That's a warning sign to stop and pray. Ask me to guide you. Ask me to lead you. Ask me for provision. Ask me to help. Ask me to end this month strong. Have you asked me? Ask me. Ask me to heal your marriage. Ask me to heal your broken heart. Lord, we ask you for all of those things. Like whatever your need is tonight, I feel like it's very strong that I impress upon you that you need to know that your relationship with God comes down to you. So I give these vague examples on a weekly basis. And you may think, she didn't say my thing. You say your thing. I mean, turn your camera off. Put your thumb over your camera and say, you say your thing. Because I feel like the Lord is just sitting here saying, she's never even asked me. She doesn't stop what she's doing. The busyness, the chore, the cleaning, the driving people around, the carpooling, the tending to that's really what it is she never stops the tending to and long enough to stop and just ask 
you know, it's that all comes down to relationship, God. We just know, I know, I always try to speak for everybody, but the truth is, I know that it's about relationship. And I also know that sometimes I forget that. Forgive me for the times that I forget that. And I just try to be better. I try to acknowledge and remember, Lord, every single day as I'm walking out this life that I have, that you put people in my path for a purpose, that when I want to feel you in my life, when I want to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, then I need to also be obedient when I do feel you. Like when I feel you tell me to do something that's uncomfortable, like to pray for someone or to comfort someone or to call someone who I need to mend a relationship with or someone who I need to apologize to. When I feel you in those ways that I need to be obedient so that I can feel you in other ways. God, we desire stronger, deeper, more meaningful relationships in our life. But Lord, mostly we hunger and thirst after a deep and meaningful relationship with you because God, without you, nothing else matters. Lord, we choose not to walk in guilt or shame or fear or any negative emotion, God, because we walk in hope and victory, and love and grace. I want to, I, I want you to, tonight, I want you to look at each of your relationships and each, actually not just relationships. I'm feeling corrected on that. Each situation that you are in right now, men tend to do this better than we do. Women do. Men tend to compartmentalize things and we make everything touch each other, you know? It's like our marriage touches our, you know, relationship with our kids, touches our work. But I feel like if you can compartmentalize something, like your job, and just ask yourself, what areas of my job do I allow the Holy Spirit to reign freely? Freely. I'm going to tell you what, this didn't come, eat, didn't, didn't come comfortably to me to make the decision that I got, I know I've got a great idea on my team calls. I'm going to talk about stuff that's going to make people look cross-eyed at me. But what areas in my life do I let the Holy Spirit reign freely? If I'm being completely candid, I let him reign more freely on my Wednesday night calls than I do at Thanksgiving dinner around family. So then I would look at that, where, what areas of my life, like let's take my family, for example, Lord, show me areas around extended family. What areas of that do I need to let you reign supreme and freely? Lord, do I go to bed every night with my husband and do I pray out loud with him? Do you reign supreme in my marriage? Are you the boss of my marriage? Is it a power struggle? Do I try to be the boss of my marriage? What about my health? Do I try to be the boss of my health? Do I think I know what's better for me than the Garden of Eden type food? <laughs> Which is what you actually supplied from the very beginning. Isn't that interesting? That in the garden there was like, you know, a garden. Do I try to be the boss of that? Because of convenience or whatever. What about things that I feel the Spirit is leading me to do? Are there, are there things that I just say, no, I'm not comfortable with that? Lord, I want you to reign supreme in every area, every corner, all the uncomfortable corners. Lord, if, there's a, if there is a calling, if there's some sort of ministry that I'm supposed to walk into, that's just to walk more freely in. 
that I'm not supposed to be letting fear hold me back in, Lord. Shine your light on it. I sit here tonight, Lord, ready to tell you, just shine your light on those areas so I can see them more clearly. Don't let me get so caught up in anybody's rat race that I'm not extremely mindful of what you have in store for me. Every area. Like I expose my heart to you, like literally turn it inside out. Lord, heal me, but heal my heart first. Lord, surround us with angels. And let the bright light of your goodness penetrate us so strongly that it literally comes out of us. I love vivid, vivid mental imagery. I feel like it's a, it's a strong tool. I feel like it's a gift that God gave us and that we don't think of it like that. I think for some reason that we think, I guess God gave me an imagination for, I don't know. And I think it's actually a tool and we, we don't use it. It's very underutilized. So when I say, Lord, penetrate me with a strong white light of your goodness. So it literally leaks out my pores. So the people in my presence practically get knocked over with your Holy Spirit presence. As people are around me, God, and as I lay hands on them, that they would be healed. Lord, as I speak, that only your heart shines through the words that I say. And that my biggest desire would be for more and more relationship with you, God. Everything else turns to dust. Everything else is of no consequence one day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, any promises I've made tonight? I'm going to start the, uh, turn that music down a little. I'm telling you what, if you want something for Christmas, you need to ask for whole tones music. Ooh. Put it on your list. Um. Anything I've promised, if, uh, if once I post the video of this call tonight. Sorry, I feel lightheaded. <laughs> I think that prayer made me lightheaded. Um, I'll try to post all the notes, anything from the call that I've said that we would talk, that we would be experiencing this for the rest of the month in December. I'll try to put that in the notes. If there's anything else I've left out, though, you guys will have to remind me because some of this stuff was coming to me during the call. So does anybody have any questions about anything else? <laughs> like what is an open realm? I feel that one coming on. <laughs> okay. I'm going to